Good evening, Bethlehem and saints of God. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, or maybe even good night at whatever time you're tuning into our Wednesday Zoom Bible study. My name is Pastor Michael Eton. I'm your host for tonight's Bible study as well as the Bible teacher. And I want to welcome you to today's program. Before we get into our study tonight, we want to take this opportunity to extend a personal invitation for those who live in Pauls Valley, Oklahoma, or Garvin County. We want to extend this personal invitation for you to join us this coming Sunday at the 11 a.m. service. Bring a family member or a friend with you. We'd love to see you in this place this coming Sunday at 11 o'clock. It is a one hour service, so bring a family member again or a friend and join us right here in the sanctuary at 311 North Dunbar, right here in the heart of Paul's Valley, Oklahoma. So we want you to join us. Why don't you go ahead and visit our website? Our website is uh, www.heargodsword at Bethlehem.com. Again, our website is www.heargodsword at Bethlehem.com. There you can get to know us. And once you get to know us, scroll down to the bottom of the site and follow or friend us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, as well as YouTube. Uh, we'd love for you to be a part of our cyber church family. But ultimately, we want to see your place, your face in this place at the Bethlehem Baptist Church. For those who are visiting us for the first time, uh, we, are, we meet for this Zoom Bible study over my shoulder. We're going to have the opening prayer announcements, uh, the reading of the word, the introduction video, the Bible study itself, and the invitation and benediction. So let's go ahead and open up in a word of prayer. Father God, we come tonight, Lord, wanting to open your word to open our hearts. And even as I think of opening our heart, we have to recognize that you are holy. As your word says that you are holy, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. And because you are holy, your word says to be holy as you are holy. And we want to confess our sins unto you. Please forgive us of our sins. Wash us and cleanse us that we might be in right relationship or fellowship with you that we may tonight this evening, this morning, or whatever time, hear a word from the Lord. So, Father, we ask you to inhabit this time. In Jesus' name, amen. And praise the Lord. Amen. And praise the Lord. A few announcements. Uh, uh, about two weeks from now, we're going to have a meeting with our deacons and trustees. And I'll give you the exact date on this coming Sunday. But I want you to get ready uh, for us to meet about two weeks uh, from now. And also, I shared this announcement on Sunday, on September the 3rd, uh, will be the installation service of Minister Chad Gray and his lovely wife, Dr. Nisha Gray. And we're so excited for them being called to the First Missionary Baptist Church there in Medea, Oklahoma. We look forward to fellowshipping with them there as well. Also, we have some exciting things that are coming up uh, this weekend, Bethlehem. We have our moderators uh, banquet on uh, this month on the 5th, which is Saturday at 6 p.m. And we thank those who've already purchased their ticket tickets. I believe there may be more. If you need to know, just give me a call if you want to be a part of that banquet. And then uh, we're going to begin our annual association on that Sunday, the 6th, uh, 6 p.m. at Pleasant Deal there with our moderator there as we celebrate his uh, going out. And we'll be there and throughout the week until Wednesday as we have our annual session. And we're excited for what God is about to do. And we just want you to get ready to participate. We also will be voting for our moderator on that Tuesday and Monday and Tuesday. So we're excited about what God is about to do in the life of Chickasaw District and in the life of our church. So 
wants you to govern yourself accordingly, even as you pray uh, for the fifth Sunday in September, as we will celebrate our church anniversary this coming. And we're making, begin to make plans for that as well. So we're excited what God is doing. And I want you to Bethlehem to pray. I'll send my pastor's prayer list out tomorrow. And I want you to pray uh, for all of these things I just mentioned in Jesus' name. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, continue today in the series entitled Asking for a Friend. Asking for a Friend. And this is a series about relationships. And, and we're not asking for you. We're just asking for a friend. And we've had uh, many things that we've addressed during this series, many questions uh, that we've addressed. And uh, some of the questions that we uh, addressed uh, were uh, just asking for a friend, should Christians of the same sex marry? Mary, we talked about that last Wednesday night. We're closing out the, uh, the sermon series on should Christians get a divorce? We talked about that Sunday. Today, we're going to pose the question, should Christians be faithful to their marriage? And, and I said uh, on Sunday, all of these questions seem to be obvious to answer. Um, but if you look in the life of the people in the church, it doesn't seem so obvious. We talked about divorce. I remember one time uh, Christians divorced at a higher rate than regular people did. I can remember that time. And the question we're going to ask tonight is, uh, should Christians be faithful to their marriage? It should be obvious that we should. Uh, other questions we're going to ask throughout this series as we finish uh, we're going to talk about should Christian single divorcees, widows, and widowers have sex outside of marriage? There's some unique things that happens, especially with divorcees and widowers. And we're going to talk about that as well. And asking for a friend, should Christians be forgiving in their love relationships? You, you would think that's obvious, but there are many Christian marriages that continue to perpetuate uh, their marriage but they're holding grudges or holding what happened 20 years against their spouse today. So we have to ask that question, should Christians be forgiving in their love relationships? The obvious answer is yes, but sometimes the way we live is not that obvious. But tonight we're talking about should Christians be faithful in their marriage? We're gonna read Malachi chapter two, verse 14. Through 15, and I'll read that in your hearing tonight. And it reads as following You ask why? It is because the Lord has witnessed between you and the wife of your youth. You have been unfaithful to her, though she is your partner, the wife of your marriage covenant. Verse 15 Has not the one God made you? You belong to him in body and spirit. And what does the one God seek? Godly offsprings. So be on your guard and do not be unfaithful to, your, to the wife of your youth. I read to you Malachi chapter 2, verse 14, 15. And may God only bless the doers of his marvelous and marvelous magnificent and miraculous word in Jesus' name. Tonight, we're posing the question, just asking for a friend. Now, this don't have anything to do with me or it don't have anything to do with you. We're just asking for a friend. Should Christians be faithful to their marriages? We're going to look on around three points. The Holy Spirit gives us other words. We're going to talk about the witness of unfaithful the whoremongering of the unfaithful and the wife of the unfaithful. The witness of the unfaithful, the whoremonger of the unfaithful and the wife of the unfaithful. We're going to 
talk about tonight and let you know that Christians should be faithful to their marriages. Christians should be faithful to their marriages. We're going to take this time to go straight to the map. And we're in the book of Malachi. And Malachi was a contemporary of Ezra and Nehemiah. So uh, this is why we have this map up today. And Malachi, uh, they call these guys the minor prophets. I don't believe that there are any minor prophets. God did not make a distinguish between that's something that man do. They, they make distinguish. They call uh, Malachi a minor prophet and Jeremiah uh, the major prophets. And, and we have a secular way of looking at things. But I, I don't believe when you have a message from the Lord, the, the, the Lord is major if he's in the message. Hello, somebody. There's no distinction between what we try to put, make minor, because the book is bigger as opposed to the smaller books. And most of us uh, who grew up in the church lived off of the doctrine of uh, Malachi in regards to tithing and offerings. And this is why we put him in that time of Ezra and Nehemiah. Remember, Nehemiah helped build the walls of the city and Ezra built the temple. And it was Malachi who had to come along and tell them that to bring ye all the tithes and offerings into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And that was Malachi who said, uh, uh, when you do this, God in the old in the King James, you open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings. And, and, and the newer translation said they will open up the floodgates of heaven. And, and blessings will come. That That's Malachi. And I know Baptists, we, 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 we built our life, built our church. Matter of fact, uh, Bethlehem is a, a Malachi kind of church because we have givers. We want to thank you for giving and praise God for you giving. want to thank those uh, from all around the nation who send their tithes and maybe offerings to Bethlehem. And God has blessed Bethlehem to continue on. And, and that's because there are givers in the church. And we want to thank you for giving and challenge you to continue to give in Jesus' name. So uh, we don't know where exactly Malachi uh, did his writings, but we think it was down here in Jerusalem. We think it was in Jerusalem because of his works. Uh, on on and about the temple. We think it's Jerusalem, which is about here. And this map uh, shows the return of the Jewish exiles to Judah. And again, Ezra was the one who helped build the temple and Malachi built on top of the temple and helped the people to provide for the house of God. But Malachi had not only some strong things to say about the house of God, but Malachi also had some strong things to say about divorce. We learned last on Sunday that God is crying in the streets about divorce. Malachi was the one that said divorce to God was violence. And I've been saying throughout this ser series parenthetically, as we have cried in the streets about the violence that happened to young black men, particularly George Floyd and all the world cried out for what happened, uh, the violence of George Floyd. And, and all the world crying out, violence. And I've said, having written a book, The Black Lives Matters in the, in the Bible, I, I, I said that, 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 that because we're made in the image of God, um, that every man, I said last week as we talked about homosexuality and same-sex marriage, that everybody's made into the image of God and we must protect those images. Those lives must matter in Jesus' name. And then I told you about Malachi. 
and who said that the voice for the voice God was crying violence. And I've said that in order for black lives to matter, black love must matter. And, and, and I hadn't even known that I had tapped into the emotions of God in regards to by, uh, calling out violence in the streets for the voice. God wants marriage to last for a lifetime. And, and when it doesn't, he screams in the street, marriages matter to God. Black love should matter to matter to God. Black marriages should matter. All marriages should matter uh, as God in God's side because he's crying out in the street in the same way he cried out for George Floyd. God is crying out for marriages when divorce happened. Let's go to point number one. And, and, and this is Malachi again talking in this text about marriage. Uh, uh, Malachi says, with is the witness of unfaithful, of the unfaithful. You ask why? It is because the Lord is a witness between you and the wife of your youth. We pose the question tonight, should um Christians be faithful to them. It seems it should be obvious, but it's not obvious. I was in Kentucky at our national convention. And God had me run across, Sister Eton and I, one minister. And one of the things that people feel real comfortable was sharing some stuff. And he was sharing uh, with us uh, one of the most horrible things that he did is that he cheated on his wife and he lost everything. And he said something interesting. He said, you see, he had grow up, grew up, and he was a pastor of church. He had grew up in a culture where as a young man, he followed the older ministers and the older ministers were cheating on their wives, and he thought that that was normal. He thought that that was natural. That was the model that he had, and he went out and produced the model that he had, and he lost everything. Had he read his Bible, had he really been a disciple of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you can read for yourself in the book. That's why it's so important uh, to study the word of God because the word of God will give you the perfect example of what you're supposed to do and many uh, examples of what you should not do. And had this man followed the word of God as opposed to following man, he would not have lost his marriage and his marriage god was crying out in the street violence but 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 he chose to be unfaithful and god had witness against him there's a witness when you you think you're getting away with it hello somebody you 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 you, you think oh that nobody knows and nobody sees and you may be slick enough for that to happen i talked about in the in the uh and my address at Chickasaw Congress is some men have women with burner phones, which means there's no way to trace them. Hello, somebody. And they cut, they become so slick. Hello, somebody. But God is a witness to somebody who's unfaithful to their marriage. You may have had a bad example. You may be a man of God and you think that that is normal and to wish that is a lie from the pit of hell. Boy, if you're a man of God and you're cheating against your wife, you need to repent in Jesus' name. And I'm talking for preachers as well as regular men. Uh, you need to repent because God has witnessed what you're doing. In Jesus' name, and it should be obvious that God wants you to be faithful to your marriage, and maybe you got caught up, oh, with some of your comrades who, who are doing the same thing. God says that they're not the standard. The word of God is the standard, and God has a witness against the unfaithful, he says, between you and the wife of your youth. You have been unfaithful to her. 
though she is your partner, the wife of your marriage covenant. You've been unfaithful to her, unfaithful to your partner, the wife of your youth. You stood up before the people, 20, 30, 40, oh, maybe even one year ago and said that it's you and her are you and him against the world? And God has a witness tonight to say that you have been unfaithful and you need to change in Jesus' name. God, God takes this really, really seriously. This is what God has to say about unfaithfulness and, and, and Proverbs. And many of you may have read this before in Proverbs. It it says, wisdom will save you also from the adulterous woman, from the wayward woman with her seductive words, who has left the partner of her youth. Here's a woman that's guilty of leaving the partner of her youth and seducing a younger man. Hello, somebody. And it says that the partner of her youth and ignored the covenant she made before God. Marriage is a covenant before God. It is a promissory note before God that you're going to be faithful to your mate all of the days of your life. Hello, somebody. It says, surely, this is what happened. You get involved with an adulterous woman. It says, surely our house lead down to death and are passed to the spirits of the dead. Young man, don't be seduced by that older woman. Hello, somebody. Don't be seduced even by a younger woman. You made a commitment before God, before your family. You now have children. Some of you have grandchildren. Some of you have great-grandchildren. And the devil is trying to seduce you out of 40 years of marriage, out of 50 years of marriage, 30 years of marriage. Oh, because there's a seductress. Hello, somebody. And it happens to men and women the same. Hello, somebody. God has a witness against you. And it's time for you to repent and turn from your evil ways. If my voice finds you at the middle of this situation tonight, today, this afternoon, or whenever you listen. For some, it's a warning. Hello, somebody. You made a commitment before God, and now God is witnessing. You go back on your commitment. That was point number two, that, uh, point number one, witness. We're going to try to go on to our next point. We're talking tonight, should Christians be faithful to their marriages. Malachi chapter two, verses 14 through 16. Point number two, the whoremonger of unfaithfulness. It says a little later in the text, you have been unfaithful to her, though she is your partner. God had the witness and he's calling you out as a whoremonger. Hello, somebody. That's the Old Testament or Old King James term, whoremongers. That's, 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 that's men who go to prostitutes and also women who live a, 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 a sexually unpure lifestyle. And they used to call them whoremongers. And God says today, you have been unfaithful to her. Though she is your partner the wife of your marriage covenant, you've been unfaithful. God has a problem with this. Maybe the ministers you hang around with don't have a partner because they got a, uh, 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 they got two first ladies on Sunday morning, three first ladies from different parts of the church. They, they let their regular wives stay at, at home and bring uh, uh, the other Woman to the conventions. Hello, somebody. All kind of mess is going on and has gone on. And it may be the reason why God has called his judgment down on many of our churches because we live sexually immoral lives. There are people in the church 
Ah, who've been faithful to the church and living with women, living with men and not married. And there's folk who are married, who've been unfaithful to their marriages. Uh, and there's folk that have inclinations for the same sex in our marriage. The only one want to be married and stay committed to marriage. Whoo, that's that. That's backwards, church. He calls us out of our wicked ways, our ungodliness. He, 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 he. Uh, this is what he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. That's that term I told you about. Or do you not know that whoremongers will not inherit the kingdom of God? We addressed last week about same-sex marriages and how people say that they go to hell. And I told you last week, oh, that the only impardonable sin is to, um, to not accept Jesus Christ. And right here it's saying in evidence it in your lifestyle because he says, whoremongers are not going, oh, to inherit the kingdom of God. And I told you, you may have been born this way, but when you were born again, God wants to change you and transform you because if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. And this text is saying that your life has to evidence it or you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Whoremongers. He said, do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, that uh, uh, sexually immoral, that single folk having sex outside of marriage, if that's your practice, if that's your lifestyle, we're talking about practice now, and, 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 and that is a lifestyle, and when you practice, you get better at it. In other words, if you say you accept Jesus Christ and you got better at of sinning as opposed to getting better and rejecting the sin in your life, you may need to check yourself because you may not have truly accepted Jesus Christ and have received the deposit of the Holy Spirit that seal on your life because that whole, the Holy Spirit will change your life. Hello, somebody. You can't be Christian. You may start out that way. Hello, somebody. But you can't stay that way. You can't stay a homonger. You can't stay a sexual immoral person or an adulterer. Hello, we're talking about tonight. An adulterer, nor a man who has sex with men, nor hello somebody, because we like to pick on, we like to pick on a uh, different kind of, uh, okay, uh, uh, um, 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 uh, being a thief or being greedy. Or being a drunkard is okay than being someone who have inclination for the same sex. No, God puts all of that in the same category. And like I said last week, I, ain't, I don't usually pick out sins because God in his word puts it all in the same category. He says, all these people who practice this, who become better, you see, practice make perfect. They say, you come better. All these people are sexual, moral, and, and getting better at it. Adulterers are getting better at it. Uh, idols and getting better at it. Men with men getting better at it. Thieves get becoming a better thief, becoming more greedy. Nor uh, drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. God's not playing with us. As we play church, hello, somebody. He, he already says he's a witness. First point, he witnessed what you're doing. And if you're not being perfected, if you're not being transformed, if you're not being changed, Paul would say you need to check yourself to make sure that you are in the faith because people with these lifestyles listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, Verse 9 and 10, he says, will not inherit the kingdom of God. And we're talking about tonight adulterers, uh, uh, those who commit adultery on their marriage. Should Christians be faithful to your marriage? Yes. As a matter of fact, it may determine whether you uh, have really and truly been saved by your lifestyle. That's why so many people have fallen from the church today because they were playing church. And when church and life got hard, 
They didn't have a foundation and as opposed to falling to God, they fell away from God because they had these kind of lifestyles. They fell away and they will not truly inherit the kingdom of God. So church, we, we've talked about a lot tonight. We pose the question, should Christians be, uh, should they be faithful to their marriage? Um, because there are some Christians who, who try to be sophisticated. They, uh, they want to be faithful to their marriage, but want to add somebody to the marriage bed. That's not godly. That's not holy. The Bible does say the marriage bed is undefiled, but it's not saying that you can defile your bed by adding other people to it. Or other wives to it. Some part of our nation uh, and, and, and most parts of the country, they, they, they can have more than one wife. That is idolatry. You cannot do that. That is adultery. You cannot do that. That is sexual immorality. God says in this text, and not inherit the kingdom of God. You got to get all these people out of your bed. Hello, somebody. And be committed to the marital bed and the marital bed only or else if you're single, you need to live holy until the Lord is saved sex for marriage. And as I've said before many times during this series, the Bible says it's better to marry than to burn. Hello, somebody. God is not playing with this church. He's not playing with, I mean, he takes this serious and we take it flippantly you know they call it now an indiscretion or a understanding our they use sophisticated terms our marriage is open uh you know we we, we you, you know we, we 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 have an agreement that we can see other people on the side all of that is ungodly and all of that is unbiblical all of that is unholy all of that is behavior of people that will not accept the kingdom of God or enter the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. He doesn't play with whoremongers. He's witnessed. He's called us out on our character and our behavior as whoremongers. And lastly, he's talking about the wife of the unfaithful. And he says this, he says this, this is to the people of God. In Malachi's time, who challenged the people of God to provide for the temple. Now he wants you to provide for your own household, provide faithfulness for your own marriage, your own household, and do not be unfaithful to the wife of your youth. That means you married her when she was young. Now that she old, don't try to put her away and get a younger woman. Hello, somebody. That's what men try to do. You want to get a younger model. Hello, somebody. No, God says be faithful to the wife of your youth. Be faithful. I, I, I've said this before. It just drives me nuts for people who've been married 40 years and, and want to get a divorce, 50 years and want to get a divorce, 60 years. You hear of some folk who are in their 80s getting a divorce. That is idiotic. And, and an ignoramus. Hello, somebody. God says, be faithful to the wife of your youth until death do you part. Most of us who marry, now I know they're changing the vows today, but most of us who marry, we always will take, we keep that one in. Many times they take out the, the, the submission part, be uh, submissive to you. Uh, I don't know anybody that takes out until death do you part. Marriage is meant to be permanent. Marriage is meant to be exclusive between two people. And that's the only way it works. And God is challenging men in this text. It says, uh, be faithful to the wife of your youth. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Because men have been notorious for this behavior. The women can get caught up in it too. Be faithful to your the husband of your youth. Be faithful to the wife 
of your youth in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. This is from Matthew 5, 5. says, you have heard that it is said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already commit adultery with her in his heart. Jesus even changed the game. Uh, we all know one of the 10 is to do not commit adultery. And Jesus changed the game. He said, you've heard it said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent, has already committed adultery in uh, her in, with her in his heart. That's how uh, profound this thing is. That's how major this thing is, is that we be faithful. God says that you not only need to be faithful in the flesh, you need to be faithful in the mind. You could talk about being married and, and imagining uh, being with uh, uh, while they're with their mate with some movie star or, 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 or some singing star. Jesus said to even think of such is to ruin the marital bed. And some people saying we got an understanding, you know, we and they take that uh that, that the marriage bed is undefiled, out of content. They they believe that they they themselves can come to an understanding and and, and, and as a result, it's not the fact. No, it's not your understanding of it. It's God's understanding of it. And God says to even look at a woman and lust after her to commit adultery in your heart. He wants even your thoughts about it. Woo! That's how committed you should be to your wife and your husband. You don't even think of another man or another woman. Uh, you don't you don't get uh, I, I, I'm trying to keep it uh, clean where I don't offend anybody, but um, you don't even think about somebody else in the sex act. Woo! That's what God says, even outside of the sex act. When you see a woman at Walmart, you, you, you're not supposed to lust after her in your heart, in your mind. That's how. Uh, God says that you should be faithful to your mate with your heart, your mind, your soul, and your might should be all given to the wife that you have and stop coveting other folk wives. Hello, somebody. Woo. In Jesus' name, I, I think I've said enough. Now I've run out of time. Bethlehem, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Um, but I, I have to make sure we leave tonight that Christians uh, should be faithful to their marriage. Christians should not get a divorce. And we said that if you have that lifestyle, and there's a decision that you have to make if, you, if you're becoming worse and worse in this area as a whoremonger, as an adulterer, you need to check yourself to make sure that you're in the faith. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And if you're here today, and you have that lifestyle, you've been around the church, but the church is not in you. And you've got to give your life to Jesus Christ. You've got to pray this simple prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I come today asking you to forgive me of my sins, wash me and cleanse me that I might be in right relationship with you. That I might truly be saved. That I might be in you and live out your word that says that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. Father. Give me Christ that I might be new. In Jesus' name, amen. And praise the Lord. If you prayed that prayer for the first time and you're anywhere near Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, I have to let you know tonight that you've been born into the body of Christ right here at 
the Bethlehem Baptist Church. We're located at 311 North Dunbar. And I'm no longer inviting you to the church. I'm telling you to come home because you've been born into the body of Christ right here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church. Again, we're located at 311 North Dunbar, and we want to see you this coming Sunday at the 11 a.m. service. Better yet, why don't you meet us at 10 a.m. for Sunday school? And once you're there, I want you to let me know that you pray to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and we will accept you into the body of Christ right here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church. Again, 311 North Dunbar. We'd love to see your face in the place this coming Sunday. If you pray that prayer for the first time anywhere else in America, we're going to pray that God will lead you to a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching, Bible-living church where you can grow up in the things of God in Jesus' name. But you must find a church home. You must find a church home. Again, Bethlehem, I want to thank you tonight for joining us. And as always, I want to challenge you to stay connected. Stay connected to God's person. Stay connected to God's precepts. And stay connected to God's people, which means we will see you this coming Sunday in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify your holy name. You're truly worthy to be praised. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've said and done. May we be doers of your word and not just hearers. May we resist the temptations of the devil in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, for keeping us in Jesus' name. Amen. And praise the Lord, Bethlehem. You are dismissed in Jesus' name.